Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm here today for Cruz five month baby update. I cannot believe he's five months old. I'm gonna say this every monthly update that I cannot believe he's growing like a normal human being, but I don't know, it's still surprising. Every time they get bigger, you're just like, where did the time go? So he's five months old and he's got the hiccups right now because he just ate. But I wanted to do a quick little update and just kind of the traditional, all the things and milestones that he's hitting in case you guys also have five month old babies and you want to know all of that. If you do follow my vlogs, you'll probably know most of this stuff already, but I just wanted to kind of touch base and give his little update. Okay, so we did have a doctor's appointment this month. Um, not like an, a regular checkup, but he was sick. So he had a little bit of a cold, which is no big deal. I called the doctor and they said, just kind of monitor it, no big deal. He had like a small temperature. I think it was like 100 something. Um, so we didn't take him to the doctor. Then my mom was in town and she's like, he's kind of pulling it at his ears. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll see. And like, I didn't notice him pulling at his ears until like a couple days later. So that's when I made the doctor's appointment, took him in. Sure enough, he had both ears infected. I've never had, Cal never had both at the same time. He had a lot of ear infections, but never both at the same time. So both of his cute little Dumbo ears are infected. And um, he also had RSV, which sounds really scary. And I think it is really scary, but thankfully in his case, it wasn't that bad. Um, they didn't actually, she didn't actually test him. Like she said, they would swab him and like run a test. She didn't do that because she just, kind of assumed that that's what it was and she said it was going around like crazy in this area so she's just like that's what he has um and there's no there's no treatment for it um unless it was really bad and severe but since it wasn't that severe she's like just let it run its course so he went on amoxicillin for his ears he's still on it right now um and then nothing for the rsv but Basically, if their breathing is really bad or they're dehydrated, that's when it can get scary and serious, but he didn't have those symptoms. He was just, it seemed just like a regular cold, so I'm not really sure what the difference is. I feel like when it's RSV, um, it just is a cold with a smaller baby. They call it RSV. I don't really know, but he had RSV. Uh, maybe he still has it. I'm not sure. That was like almost a week ago is when he got diagnosed. So that's probably the biggest thing that's going on. <laughs> And he's uh, he's stuck it on his fingers. He's definitely teething, drooling. Loves to chew on things. He loves to like hold little toys and like turn them and look up at them and stuff in his hands. Um, he's really communicating a lot with his bigger brother, who's two and a half. And they will, you know, Cal will like play and stuff in front of him and try to hand him toys. And he just like stares and giggles at him, and it's so cute. So they're actually starting to kind of play together. Um, his weight, I'm not really sure. So we took him to the doctor, like I said, and he was 12 pounds when they weighed him there, 12 pounds and something ounces, I don't remember, um, which is what he was like the past, like at least last month, maybe even the month before. So that would mean he's really not gaining a lot of weight. But when I asked the doctor about it, she said, since he's sick, it's really not a good time to, you know, assess his weight gain right now so she's like let's just wait until he's six months old at his regular checkup and then we'll like look into his weight gain so I'm I'm okay with it like he looks fine and happy and chubby so I'm not really worried about it but I think he's just on the smaller scale and that's how my other son was too he was always in the 25th percentile of weight so I just make small babies I think um next thing is breastfeeding we're still fully breastfeeding um I still feed on demand, you know, I just I just fed him just now, so I just kind of like whip it out whenever he gets fussy. That's just how I do it. I don't really like time it around certain, you know, around naps. I don't do schedules. I just feed him whenever. Um, he's been bottle fed here and there. Um, you know, my mom will watch him, David will give him a bottle. I've given him bottles once in a while too, like if I drink wine or whatever. Um, so we give him bottles and he does pretty good with them. He's just definitely more, he, definitely prefers the breast I can tell um, cereal I did start baby cereal with his four-month appointment they said that he kind of needed to gain a little bit more weight um, and he was having a lot of bless you a lot of um, reflux so she thought the cereal the doctor thought cereal would help with that so I did buy cereal and I was I tried it in a bottle then I tried spoon feeding it 
and he's just not into it and I don't want to force it on him because like honestly I don't I don't personally think he needs it um, I have mixed it with my breast milk and I well I always mix it with my breast milk but I'll stick it in the freezer in a little like mesh mesh pouch and give it to him frozen and he does enjoy that so I'll do that you know maybe a couple times a week but otherwise we're not really on a schedule of giving him cereal every day um, you know it's just something fun like if I if I'm making cow dinner and I want to like have crew be involved then I might make him a little bowl of rice cereal and breast milk um, but for the most part it's really not like in our schedule right now and I just you know I think that all he really needs is the breast milk for now um, so solids we have not even ventured down that road yet um, he's five months old so I know at six months usually they start solids my other son the pediatrician said he could start at four months and I totally was like so excited but this time around, I'm taking it a lot slower because they really don't need, it's just a waste of like your time and energy. And like first baby, it's like, oh yeah, it's so exciting and so much fun. And this time around, it, I just, to me, it's just like, what's the point? Like he's not even gonna like it. So yeah, we have, I have like no anticipation really for solids, but once we do get the okay, I'll probably introduce them slowly and like give it to them you know a couple times a week or something just for fun um and then bedtime routine and sleeping through the night i'm sure y'all are curious about that so all right so i'm going to be inserting this little clip of an updated um talk about his nighttime routine and his sleep schedule because since i filmed this video it's already changed and he is now sleeping through the night if you watched my nighttime routine, I went into detail more about it, but basically he is now going to sleep at 6.30 p.m. and he is sleeping all the way until, I'm also feeding him right now in the car. There you go, baby. So he is going to bed at 6.30 p.m. and he sleeps in until anywhere from 6.30 a.m. until even 8.30 a.m. so he's sleeping really really long good night stretches now it is a total life-changing game changer it's insane um but i don't really have like any reason as to why he's doing that now i will say we are using the magic sleep suit merlin's magic sleep suit i'll link it down below we were using that since he was about six weeks old though and for some reason it just kicked in and now it's like helping him sleep through the night and then we also use of course a sound machine but also i am feeding him for a good 30 minute stretch now right before he goes to sleep and i feel like that really long feeding in the dark with the sound machine on just really helps him fall asleep and then i don't know guys he's just sleeping at least 12 hour stretches i i don't know what happened but it is the best thing ever so now we can get back to the rest of his update and I try to put him down at like 6.30, which I know is super early, but that's just when he starts to get tired. I always get his like tired cues right around 6 p.m. and I just have been putting him down. I start to breastfeed him in here with the lights off and the sound machine on right here in this chair and I rock him and feed him um, around 6 p.m. and then he's down in there by no later than 6.30. He also doesn't fall asleep on the boob. Like with Cal, he always fell asleep on my boob and then I laid him in his bed asleep crew is like wide awake by the time i pull him off he's like wide awake again so i think that might be part of it because he has to put himself to sleep which in the long run will be better but right now it's kind of hard for him and lastly diapers clothes size hair he's getting more hair in but he's definitely still super bald but it is kind of brown um he's in size three to six month clothing still it still fits him really good um Diapers were in size two, but I definitely want to go up to a size three once uh, I run out of the twos. I'm really liking the Pampers diapers a lot. With Cal, I wasn't picky, but for some reason, which is weird because he's second baby, but for some reason, I'm really into Pampers diapers and then the Pampers and Huggies natural wipes. I just really like the both of those lines. So I'm not really into the Target stuff anymore and the Walmart stuff. I used to love that for Cal, but... I don't know, this baby's fancy. <laughs> I think that's about everything. Do you have anything you want to say? Do you talk a lot? You coo and you smile? Yeah, what do you do? Do you stand a little bit and you roll over both ways? Yeah. I love you. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing Crew's five-month update, and I will see you in our next video. Bye.